French can take their croissants, the Belgians can have their chocolate, and the Italians can keep their cannolis. When it comes to dessert, I believe the Americans have everyone beat. America, America. Take, for example, this gorgeous Lady Baltimore cake. Created here in America, it is a beautiful, light, white cake with a dried fruit and nut filling topped with a meringue frosting. But before we delve into how to make this vintage recipe and then use it as inspiration to make it modern, you have to earn it by taking a little quiz. <laughs> Lady Baltimore cake was named after a real person. True or false? False. There are quite a few versions of how the Lady Baltimore cake got its moniker, but my favorite is that it came from a Victorian novel published in 1906, where a gentleman has a taste of Lady Baltimore cake and is so enamored, he has to make a pass at the woman who baked it. Lady Baltimore cake originated in Charleston, South Carolina. True or false? Possibly true. The other origin story is the women who owned the Lady Baltimore Tea Rooms in Charleston created this cake as a derivation of a then popular queen cake. Lady Baltimore cake is featured in the popular animated series, The Simpsons. True or false? True. A Lady Baltimore cake is seen while Agnes Skinner is showing Bart pictures in her scrapbook. Now that you've passed the quiz, it's time to make the cake. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, prepare two eight inch cake pans by lightly greasing them with vegetable shortening. Then line the insides of the pans with parchment paper. Finish by dusting the inside of the pans with flour. In a medium bowl, combine two and a half cups cake flour, two and a half teaspoons baking powder, and a pinch of salt, then set it aside. In a small bowl, combine one cup milk and one and a half teaspoons vanilla extract and set it aside. In the large bowl of your electric mixer, cream together a quarter cup vegetable shortening, a quarter cup softened butter, and one and a half cup sugar until light and fluffy, making sure to scrape down the sides every now and again. With the mixer on low speed, add about one third of the flour mixture. Mix until the flour is almost incorporated, but not quite. Scrape the bowl down and add approximately half of the milk mixture, blending until just mixed. Scrape the bowl down again and continue alternating with the flour mixture and the milk mixture, ending with the remaining flour mixture and stirring until just blended. Set aside. In a bowl, beat four egg whites with an electric mixer until stiff peaks form. Gently fold approximately a quarter of the beaten egg whites into the batter to lighten, and then fold in the remaining egg whites. This will give your cake a beautiful lift and airiness to it. Carefully pour the batter into the prepared cake pans and smooth out the top. Bake for approximately 30 to 35 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean. Remove from the oven and let it cool for about 10 minutes, then flip out of the pans and finish cooling on a rack. Once the cake is cooled, it's time to make the frosting. In the bowl of your mixer, beat two egg whites until stiff peaks form. In a heavy bottom saucepan, combine one and a half cup sugar, two thirds cup water, and one teaspoon light corn syrup. Cook over medium heat while stirring until the sugar is dissolved. Then turn up the heat and bring to a boil. Boil without stirring until the mixture hits 248 degrees on a candy thermometer. With the mixture at medium high speed, pour the hot syrup slowly in a thin, steady stream into the previously beaten egg whites. Add vanilla extract and continue beating until the mixture is thick and shiny. Now it is time to make the filling. In a food processor, mix 1 3rd cup dried figs, one third cup raisins, and half a cup pecans. Chop until everything is in small pieces about the size of dried lentils or smaller, but be sure not to turn it into a paste. You want it to be crumbly, not smooth. In a small bowl, mix together the dried fruit and nuts with about a quarter of the frosting. 
Smooth the filling on top of one of the layers of cake and then top with the second layer. Carefully smooth the rest of the frosting over the cake. It's almost too beautiful to eat, but here it goes. Mm. I mean, first of all, I've never met a cake that I didn't like, but this one, it's so light and airy. And the frosting is my favorite part because it dries after a few minutes, basically like you're frosting it with a meringue and creates a sort of crunchy shell that's totally unexpected. And then you have that dried fruit and nut filling really just brings the whole thing together. When you have a dessert this good, there isn't much that can be done to make it modern. But I do have a slightly different version, which is far less time consuming to make because you use a boxed cake mix and then serve it in mason jars. Begin by following the directions on a box of white cake mix, but add one teaspoon of vanilla to the mixture. Carefully pour into a cupcake tin filled with liners and bake according to the box directions. When finished, remove from the oven and let cool. Meanwhile, make the frosting and the filling exactly like in the original recipe. To assemble, cut the cupcakes in half horizontally. Place half of a cupcake in a mason jar. Next, spoon some of the filling on top and then add another half of the cupcake. Add a bit more filling and then top with one more half of a cupcake. Finish by frosting the top. Isn't that gorgeous? I like both versions of Lady Baltimore cake, but the modern variant has more of the delightful filling, which is really the best part. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to read my Victorian romance novel and eat my Lady Baltimore cake. If you liked any of the home goods in today's video, you can find them at my online store, RetroDepot.co. Just click the link in the description box below. <sighs> I feel like somebody's pumping and laughing gas. Okay, the Belgians. Sorry, I couldn't resist. False, <laughs> jazz hands. Restaurant, but I'm guessing it had multiple rooms. Whatever, those Victorians were great, great. False, wow. Okay, False. literally everything in the whole world has been in The Simpsons. Do you know that it's been on almost as long as you've been alive? Pretty much. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work, okay. <laughs>